In this video, we're going to be talking about a Python library that will allow you to quickly implement a user interface for your machine learning models. And without further ado, we're starting right now. So the Python library that I'm talking about is called Gradio. And so Gradio will allow you to easily create a user interface for your machine learning model, for your functions, or your API in only a few lines of code. And so let's have a look at some of the examples that they have on the web page here. So this is an example of the digit classifier. And so in this pseudocode that you can see here, you're going to be essentially importing the library of Gradio, and then you're going to be defining the custom function that will allow you to recognize the digit as shown here in the web application below. And then you're going to implement that custom function into the function right here, the fn input argument. And then the input will be a sketchpad, which is right here, a sketchpad. And then the outputs will be using the label. And so for the gr.interface argument that you see right here, you're going to end it up with a launch function. And so that's essentially it. And then you could get this web application. So let's give this a try. So if I draw a number in here, then the number will be updated. Let's say I can draw a number of one. And then there's a 98% confidence or probability that this is a number one. Try it again. Okay. And note here that I could also increase or decrease the size of the ink. Hmm. Okay. Try again. Hmm. Okay. So apparently this model needs further improvement. And let's have a look at the next demo questions and answer. And so here you can see that you will import the Gradio library, and then you're going to define a custom function that will be performing the actual answering of the question, given the paragraph as input and also the question as input. And then this particular function will be placed in here in the FN as the input argument. And then you're going to see that you're going to have input, which is the text box right here. And then text will be your question. And then the answer will be placed below. So the question is, when did Victoria enact its constitution? And so from this context, the question is right here. And then the output will be the answer. And it is also a text that you see here, a text. And let's click on Submit. And it's running. And it says 1975, right here, 1975. Phase segmentation, outbreak forecast. And so same thing, you import the library and also additional libraries as well because it's going to use the matplotlib. And so the custom function will be here and the custom function is called outbreak forecast. And then the other codes that will be involving the pre-processing of the input as a form of a dropdown and also the slider will be here. And the variables are month and countries, which will then be used as input to the interface function. Okay, and the output will be the matplotlib plot. Let's give it a try. Submit. Okay, and now we have the plot here. You see that the countries is all placed into the plot here. And so you can see here that under the hood, it supports all of the major machine learning and deep learning libraries, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn. Okay, and so let's have a look at some of the example right here. Let's create our very own, right? Let's do that. So let's open up this code in a collab. Okay, and I'm going to create a copy of this into my own Google Drive. All right, and so let's run all. And so it will start by installing Gradio, and then it's going to import all of the necessary libraries, and it's going to load up the model. So it loaded the model, 
it's gonna get the response and the labels and it's gonna define this custom function called classify image and let's have a look further and so it's gonna make use of the input of image dropbox right here and 299 by 299 is the dimension of it and then the label is the output right here on the label variable and so the label variable will be displaying the top three classes and then the actual deployment of the application will be right here in gr.interface. And so it's going to take in the name of the function, which is classify image. It will be defining the image box right here and also the label output box. And then it will be capturing the session and then it will launch the app. And actually the app is functioning here. So let's say drop image here or click to upload okay so let me let me google for an image of let's try a lion Okay, let's go for this one. Let's save that one. Let's save it to the lion desktop. Lion, drag and drop. Submit. Okay, there you go, Lion, 99%. And let's run the following code box right here. And so here it's gonna be adding an interpretation. And so let's run it. Drag and drop. Click on Submit. There you go. Let's click on Interpret. Okay, there you go. So it detects that it is a lion in this particular region of the face. Okay. And make note here is that the application has also generated this temporary URL. So this link will expire in 24 hours. So let's click on it. And let's try it again. Drag and drop. Click on submit. There you go. Okay. So it also provides the legend for the interpretation. Okay. Now we have the inception net shown. Let's go to another example. Image classification. How about this text generation with transformer? Let's open it up in Colab. And I'm going to create a copy, copy to drive. And I'm going to run all runtime and then run all cells. And so it's firstly going to install the Gradio library and also the transformer from Hugging Face. And actually, I've created a video using the Pegasus model from transformer library in a prior video. So I'll provide the link to that also in the video description. And after installing the libraries, it's going to import the necessary libraries, Gradio, TensorFlow, and the transformer. And so it's going to use the GPT-2 and also the GPT-2 tokenizer, the model and the tokenizer. And now it's going to load the model up. And then it's going to create the generate text function, which will do the magic of the GPT-2 in generating text from your input. Okay, there you go. And notice here that you could also add a description for the application right here. And then the description will be shown here. And then the title 
will be shown here. Okay, so let's click this to launch the application. And let's see, let me type in an input and it's going to take about 20 seconds to run. Let's see, let me type in what is data science. Submit. All right. So it also reiterate the question that we have placed in as the input. So it's giving us the output of data science is the study of how data is collected, stored, analyzed, and used. It is a way of understanding the world around us and how we interact with it. Data science has been around since the dawn of time. Not really, but it has never been as important as it is today. Yes, that's true, but not the dawn of time part. In fact, many of today's most important data scientists are not scientists at all. No, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so I guess this could also use some improvement, but I guess you see the great thing about this is that it allows you to easily generate this application in only a few lines of code that you can see it here. Actually, right here. This part will do the application generation. And then the prior parts will be actually generating the output box or defining the input box or also defining the custom function that will be the engine that will be responsible under the hood for transforming the input to the output. Okay. Let's have a look further. Questions and answers with BERT QA. Okay, this is awesome. So you have a context and then you ask a question and it provides an answer. Okay, you could try out this for yourself as well by clicking on Open in Colab, Titanic survival model. So given this input and it will predict the survivorship. Let's have a look further. Multiple image classifier comparing inception to mobile net. Okay, so it's comparing two approaches, mobile net and inception net right here, output one, output two. So you actually could modify this to also compare predictions from different machine learning algorithms as well, like algorithm one, algorithm two, or even more. Okay. So let me know in the comments down below how you're intending to use Gradio for your data science projects. And if you're finding value in this video, please help the channel out by smashing the like button so that other users can discover this video and this channel. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified when a new video comes out. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.